G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I feel like crazy cat lady this week. I've been working on new designs and I have been working on little kitties. So I've designed, I've actually got a little kitty pattern that's similar to this, but it's very, very small. This one is made up completely using fabrics. As I said, I'm gonna do a few more patterns like this. This one's very simple. So even a beginner can make this one up. You shouldn't feel challenged. I'll be with you every step of the way. All you need to do to access your free pattern, of course, is click on that link in the description below, download those free pattern templates. Do make sure that you set your printer to printed actual size so that your templates will be absolutely spot on. I've dropped a movie quote in there today, so see if you catch it. Let's get busy sewing. So let's begin on our little kitty. And this little kitty is made up as part of my series where I'm making up little animals entirely out of fabrics, help you use up your stash. A lot of you are more familiar with fabric than felt. So this is part of that little group of animals. So we're going to be making up little kitty. Now I'm gonna help you out with some fabric choices here today because just the way this little one is put together, there's a few little tips about what to choose in your fabric. So we're gonna start off with our body pieces and you need two of the body pieces. And they, I have interfaced mine. I do thoroughly recommend interfacing this project. Um, you just get a much better result and it makes it much easier for sewing your openings closed and so on. Um, so what I've gone for here with the body, with this one, is a busy little print, but it's a tight print. So it's quite plain. And I've done the same thing with my head pieces. Now your head pieces you need two, front and back, and you've also got interfacing on those. Now in this case, I had a fabric, two fabrics from the same color story. So I used the different fabric on the base, but basically they're all the same tones. Now what you have to remember with your little kitty's head is that we're going to be stitching those little sleepy eyes in. So you don't want a fabric that's too dark because you really want to be able to see them and you don't want a fabric um, that has a, a print that's too loud and busy. So a tighter print, see a tighter little print works just fine. So again, I haven't purchased any special fabrics for this project, I've just jumped into my stash. Um, and so I'm just using whatever colors I have. This one I've kept quite, um, I, I guess, quite believable in the colors, very kitty-like, like a little gray kitty. You don't have to do that. So this time I'm going for something quite outrageous, um, very bright, surreal, but nice. Um, and this will be, will be a little purple kitty. Now you see the print is going to work on the head because those little eyes are going to be very visible on that fabric. So that's just a tip to remember. So you've got your body pieces, your face pieces. We need a little piece for the back of the back of the head. We're going to be attaching that little head via a button and we need to reinforce the back of the head. Doesn't matter what that fabric is because it largely will not be seen. That one has fusible webbing or heat and bond on the back. You will also need your little face details. And so now I'm using my bold print so that it will really show up. So you've got your little tabby markings at the top and you have your little side pieces on your face, which will also give us that nice indication of where our little eyes will go. So I've cut those in, in a bold fabric. You'll also need your little ear sections to make those little ears stand out. Now I have cut mine in felt, but you don't have to. You can use fabric if you prefer. And you also need your little muzzle piece. And I also cut that one always in a nice off-white or cream in my felt, but you could do it in fabric. Little piece of felt for the nose. All these pieces have heat and bond applied to the back of them. Now this one will sit on here. Now we do stitch over that nose. So we're using it as a template. We are going to be doing some little stitching, embroidery stitching over that. We will stitch the little mouth in. And so that's our little face section. Obviously we stitch our little 
uh, eyes in place. So the other thing that you're going to need is the little tip of your tail. Move the little face out the way and your stripes that go around your back there. So we've got a little tail tip, it just really highlights the end of that tail. Now what you have to remember with this little kitty is that I've got her sleeping this way. So, and, and how you determine that depends on how you cut out this little piece and this little piece. So remember that you're, you're drawing up, tracing out your pattern on the other side of your fabric. So however you want your kitty to be lying, as I want it this side with the tail this side and head over here, I have to reverse that pattern piece when I'm tracing it out on the back, as I do with this one. So then when we go to put it all together, of course it's going in the right direction. By the same token, you can determine that you make your kitty the other way around so your kitty's head can be here and curled which is nice if you make a couple of them and they can be facing each other so that's entirely up to you just remember to reverse them so we've got those pieces these also have a heat and bond applied and you're also going to need a nice big button because that's how we attach the head from the underneath very very simple so we are also going to need some extra strong thread for attaching our head and I'm going to be using some black pearl thread for my eyes. Um, everything else we're going to sew on the machine. If you want to do your, your little details, if you want to hand sew them, perhaps with a blanket applique stitch, you will need some, some embroidery threads for that. I'm going to be filling our little kitty. I've got my forceps ready, which will make this job a lot easier because we're getting into some tight little spots with this one. And of course we're filling him entirely with polyester filling. I've put no weight in him at all. He sits very just nicely as he is. I made a couple of tiny adjustments to the pattern since I made this one just always uh, working on improving it so that it's just that little bit easier for you all. So our first task with this little one is we're going to first prepare our head. I think we'll make our head first because it always encourages me to make up the rest of the little animal once I've got that little face looking up at me. So first up, we're taking one of our head pieces. It doesn't matter which one because they're both the same. And we've got our little back extra support piece here and we're simply going to press that one in place with a hot iron and a protective cloth right in the center there so absolutely in the center of the head there make sure it's the same on both sides going to press that one on then I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to sew just a close little zigzag stitch all the way around that edge probably about this width here and that's just to hold it in place and remember that it won't be seen so I'm going to go ahead press that one into place and stitch that one down and here is my little disc stitched on with my zigzag stitch now my next step is to go ahead and I have gone straight across the center of that little disc and I have just ruled a little line just using my marker and it is 45 millimeters across or four and a half centimeters and it's just a straight line so it's just a little way from the edge of your outer sides of the circle and I've drawn that line in and then I've just gone ahead and, and done a little couple of little straight stitches across the edge of each of those two ends and that's just like a bit of a bar tack just to keep that all very secure because what we do next is we're just going to cut that little line open you see I have done there. You can use your little seam ripper to get that going and then make your little cut there. Now this is how we're going to turn our little head through and it is, it is how we're going to uh, stuff our little head. So it's the easiest way to create a really nicely shaped little head and not have to do a closing on any of those difficult areas. So this way, it's all very neat and tidy. We don't see any of that work 
and uh, it just makes it so much easier for you, especially if you're a novice. Um, we want to keep those ladder closings to a minimum. So while it's been a couple of steps, you have to trust me, it's much easier this way. So now we can put that one aside and now we move on to the front of our little head and we have our first step is to add our little markings. So I've taken the backing paper off there and you can see exactly those pieces will fit beautifully. There's no guesswork here. Everything lines up so straight across the top of the head and you'll see it just sits beyond, beyond the base of that ear there and you'll find the curve will fit beautifully. Make sure when you're cutting out your little pieces, these are really important. It's important to trace out and your cutting needs to be quite exact because of we're using these little sections for our eyes. So check out my video on preparing and cutting uh, your, your pattern pieces. I'll put the link up there for you, give you a few tips on um, how to make those nice and precise. So I'm going to press those on with a hot iron and a protective cloth and then I'm going to take this one to the machine and I'm going to stitch with a straight stitch very close to the edge of each one of those pieces. Not on the side seams here because they'll be part of a seam, but just around those little shapes, keeping it all nice and even, as you can see here. Now, of course, you could sew a blanket applique stitch. You could do it all by hand, but I'm trying to create a quick little project that maybe that you can make, uh, that you can certainly make it up in an afternoon or a morning and also something that perhaps you could sell at uh, craft markets or online. So, and I do like the machine stitching. It does um, give it a nice clean finish. So I'm gonna press those on and do my stitching. Now, once you have your markings stitched into place, you can go ahead and press on your little ear sections. Now your little ear sections, they sit on the lower side of the ear but you must remember that we're going to be sewing a seam all the way around there so they can't be too far over so leave yourself enough room but this section here should be wider than this section here. We're also going to be stitching across the ear here that separates the ear from the head. So just give yourself enough room and you can see it'll just have a little surround there that works fine. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stitch very close to the edge of each of those ear pieces um, using a coordinating thread. So now I've got my little ear pieces stitched into place and I've been able to go ahead and press on my little muzzle piece. Now, same thing there. We need to be sewing a seam around this space here. So you want to make sure that you've left room for that and so that we've still got a little bit of space. And that's exactly where that one will sit. So I've pressed that one on. Now you could just go ahead and you could do the same thing that we've done here and you could stitch very close to the edge. Now I recommend using a cream or an off-white because it, we really want to maintain that bold edge of that cream colour there so it really stands out on the face. I'm going to be sewing this one on. I like this section sewn on with a blanket applique stitch and it's a tiny one. I'm, I'm actually using my extra strong thread, my top stitching thread, in, just in an off-white. And I have come in from behind, I've got a knot in the end, and I've always start somewhere not very conspicuous. So I would never start on a predominant curve or something up the top here. Start down the bottom. And if you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before, I'm gonna put the link up there to my video that shows you how to sew this stitch. I will just do a couple here. Now they're going to be very, very tiny stitches. Blanket applique just means that we're going to be taking our, some of our fabric. We're going to be coming out right on the edge of our little shape, making sure that we're taking up some of the underneath fabric. And it's really just a tiny stitch, it's probably about two millimeters that I'm making these stitches. And I like this stitch around this section because it really just bonds that edge all the way around. And once you stuff that head, it has that nice rounded look. You can see there, it's really well adhered. So there's my first stitch. 
My second one will be just the same size and same distance apart. And you see I'm coming out right on that edge and my needle is coming out through the loop each time and that creates that little binding stitch that will hold that little pattern piece beautifully in place. You could contrast it with a contrasting thread depending on it just depends on what uh, colours you're using in your project but I generally like to keep that white muzzle section all very clean and crisp. So you see I'm going to make my way around that entire muzzle section there. I'm going to make sure that I rotate my work as I go so that all my stitches are going straight outwards. So once I've got my little muzzle piece stitched on I can go ahead and press on in the same way my little nose piece. You can see exactly where that sits just on the bridge of the nose there. And now I'm going to stitch over that little template. I'm using pearl thread just cotton pearl thread. You can use embroidery floss whatever you like and I have a knot in the end and it's a double thread and I've come out you can see there right in the center at the very base of that template that's my starting point so now I'm going to take my threads and I'm going to make sure that they're not twisted and I'm going to take them straight up to the center of that little nose I'm going to hold my thumb there I'm going to go straight in pull those threads through now it's very important that they're not twisted. So check them again. Thumbnail right there on the edge and you can pull that one in and you'll find they will sit nice and straight and flat. Now the next stitches, make sure you always tug on both of those threads too so that they're both evenly pulled flat. Our next stitch is going to go either side doesn't matter so we're going to start base of that template again but just to the side and we're going to do the same thing lay those stitches nice and flat and dive in at the top there Again, check that stitch and pull that one in. And then I'm going to go across and I'm going to go this side. And I'm going to make my way back and forth. I'm going to keep changing sides. My reason for doing that is it's easier to get it all nice and even than stitching one side first. So now I go over to this side come out at the base of the template mirroring what I've done on the other side placing my stitch holding it in place and checking again that those threads aren't twisted as they go into the fabric. Pull that one nice and snug and now I'm going to come out at the base this side and then this side and back and forth until that whole little template is covered. Okay so now I have my little nose is nicely embroidered and my next step is to sew in my little mouth. Now this easiest way to draw in your little mouth for a really nice little kitty smiley mouth. First of all, directly straight in the center below that little nose, we just draw one little straight line that is five millimeters or half a centimeter long. You don't want it longer than that because then kitty will have a very long top lip and it changes the whole look of the face. So just a half a centimetre to there and then I use a small cotton reel or anything else that you have that will be about the right size and I just drop that in there and link that up, reflect it on the other side 
and you've got your little kitty smile. Now I've done it in a fine permanent black marker because I'm going to be stitching in black straight over that line um, and so that won't be seen. Now I'm also, while I'm doing this, I'm going to make my marks for my kitty's little sleepy eyes there you can see. Because we add these eyes after the head is filled so we get that nice pull in look um, it's best to do those marks now when our fabric is nice and flat. I don't draw a line because once we put those stitches over and you've got filling in the head those stitches can shift and then you will see that line. So we just want a start point and a finish point which actually makes it really easy because you come in with your needle at each of those points. It's very simple. So this, this little line is one and three quarter centimeters so and it starts right lined up there where your little your little face marking is so right in line and keep it right in the center of that section so just pop your two little marks in make sure they're the same either side and make sure that there's room around what will be that little stitch there so once they're all put in, these, these will be stitched in once we've stuffed our little head. But this one, I'm going to take to the machine and I'm going to stitch, starting up here, I'm going to stitch over both of those little smile marks and I'm going to stitch those two times, just so it's really, really prominent. And I do use black thread. Um, and I almost always use black thread for uh, that little smile uh, regardless of the, the colour of your kitty. So you can go ahead and sew that by hand if you wish. I would use a, a linked back stitch with embroidery thread um, but I'm going to do mine on the machine. And as you can see that's given us a lovely little mouth line there. So our next step now, that's all our work on our little head finished. We're just going to put our head pieces together. So we've got our front and head piece right sides together and you want to really make sure that you match up all of your little corners. And here's where you see where interfacing just makes all the difference because everything does line up beautifully. And, and that little head and those little ears will hold themselves really well. So I'm going to use my little clips and I'm going to clip all the way around there, right the way around that little face. And remember that we have our opening already cut so we don't need to leave an opening for turning because we're going to be turning through here. So the seam allowance is four millimetres and I sew that seam on the machine with a straight stitch two times for strength. So that's my little head all stitched up. And you can see that then I've gone ahead and I've just taken the tips off of those ears and I have gone around with my pinking shears on that lower curve and just through this section here just so that that helps turn that through. If you haven't got pinking shears definitely take your little scissors and just notch those little very obvious curves. So our next step is just to turn that one through. I find it easiest to use your uh, your, if you have your forceps, take your ears through first and take them out through that little opening. Otherwise, you just got to pull it all the way through. It will come through. Now, once you have that little head turned through, I've gone ahead and given it a little press. And I've got all that nice and flat there now. And so my next step is I'm just going to mark in my stitching lines as I have here and here for my little ears. Now what that does is it just separates those ears from the top of the head and when we fill the head it fills only the head section and not the ears so we get these lovely flat firm little ears that um, gives it a real 3D look. So, And it's as simple as just going, you can see where that line is marked just from the, where, the, where the ear finishes here to just the base, just watch the distance between your lower ear insert here and rule your two lines across and I'm going to go ahead and stitch two times right through all those layers just to separ separate that ear from the rest of the head. 
Right, so I have my little ear section stitched in now. So our next step is to fill this little head. Now, unless you're wanting to, if you want to add whiskers, I don't know why, I don't, I never add whiskers, but you certainly can. And the best time to do that is now. And that is while you still have this little opening at the back, I would use extra strong thread in a single strand with a knot at the end on your needle and then you can go in through the back of the head and you can come out anywhere there choose how many whiskers you're going to make and you would pull that one through with your thread your knot will hold it on the other side and then you can just trim off your whiskers to whatever length you like um, like I said, I like everything very neat and tidy, so I don't worry about whiskers, but you can certainly go ahead and add those and you add as many as you like and you can make them quite long and then you can trim them up later. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and fill my little head. So I'm going to be using my forceps, which really make the job easy you've got such a, a defined little shape here with this head it's hard to get it wrong um, what you need to do is basically just fill out evenly around the entire outer edge but I always start with the chin section and get my filling all packed out nicely in the chin section and then my next sections that I fill are in my top ear points up here and along that line there. So you're making sure that you're filling out every single corner. And then I find the most effective way to fill these little heads. Once you've basically got your boundaries in, you can see already that that little head is filling out. It's a simple matter of tucking in your filling all the way around so you're turning that little head around and filling out that little head shape right the way around that whole little head if you do that evenly and you keep rotating and going around and around and around then your last section to fill is right in the center you'll find that your little head shape will, will keep uh, that shape beautifully and you'll have your little cheeks filled out nicely your chin filled out nicely in the top of that head so you can go ahead you can pack that quite firm we do want it quite firm you can see that one is um, because we're going to be stitching our eyes in I have that little head really nicely filled out now all my edges are all nicely pushed out and so now my next step is just to sew up that little opening that we have at the back there and that's just as simple as sewing a little overcasting stitch. I'm using my extra strong thread and I've got a knot in the end. I've just come in underneath there. I can tuck my little knot in and I'm simply going to take a little bit from either side. Just be aware of not catching your stuffing in that little seam and we're just going to sew so that little clo opening closed and this won't be seen at all so so long as it's strong and keep it as flat as we can pulling it nice and tight and I will make my way across and then I'll probably go across again just to make absolutely sure those two little edges have met up there and because we've added that little circle on the back it's a very very strong little closing there so I'm going to make my way across back again and then just hide my knot and there we have that little opening nicely closed and nicely flat so our next step is to stitch in our little sleepy eyes so I have my doll needle for this just a medium sized doll needle and I have a double thread with a knot in the end of black pearl thread and we're just going to come in from behind at the back there somewhere I tend to come in just below that little opening somewhere in the center 
and I'm going to come out on the outer edge remember we made our little marks so I'm going to come out exactly on that first mark on the outside so come through make sure those uh, threads aren't twisted and we're going to dive back into the head on that little spot there I'm going to come out just somewhere at the back there just make sure those little threads aren't twisted and we're going to pull that one in now we're really going to pull that one in you see that we've got some definition there now now the trick is keeping up that tension and sewing a little holding stitch at the back of the head a little bit hard to show you on camera but I'll, I'll show you what I mean so I've got that pulled in as tight as I want and always go a little tighter because no matter how clever you are it'll uh, loosen up just a little so I've got my thumb there to hold that tension and I've got my finger on the other side I may have to switch those check that again I'm going to hold my thumb there to keep up that tension and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little stitch with everything compressed down like that and then I'm going to make a knot at this stage it's not tied up yet so I'm going to give it another little tug keep that tension up pull my needle through I'm going to go through the loop and it's going to make a little knot down on that surface there and now you can see that tension is held so that will stay that way so now I've got that nice little knot there we're going to dive back in and we're going to come out on the outer spot of the other eye and we're going to do exactly the same thing dive in on that side and we're going to pull that one in match up the same amount of tension and we're going to knot off just as we did with that first one from behind and that gives us our little completed kitty head all ready there for the body so let's get started on the body and so our first task with uh, our body is to press on which I have here is to press on your little stripes and your little tail tip now and it would depend on which orientation you're going for with your body as, as to the way that you've cut those out mine as I said is going this way my little head will be here so the way that I treat these edges is I actually like to zigzag them those edges on the machine with a close little zigzag and the same with this section here because when we turn it through and we're filling it I like that it's all very sealed you can see with this one that that's what I've done of course you could use a straight stitch if you prefer, prefer to do that alternatively of course you could um, hand sew that with a blanket applique stitch that's entirely up to you I find the zigzag on the machine is really easy and it's sort of in keeping with the whole sort of scrappy patchworky look um, so I'm going to go ahead and sew all around all of those pieces now while I'm doing that if you look on your pattern templates you'll also see that you've got your little markings for your opening this is a section that we leave open so we're going to be sewing a ladder stitch to close that opening once we've stuffed our little kitty and uh, it's much easier if we sew the same zigzag stitch that we're going to use on those front pieces just sew a zigzag stitch close to the edge on each of those pieces because it's just going to keep that little section nice and true and it will stop it stretching so when we come to close it that our, our little edges will be nice and even and they won't have frayed away so that's just another little tip and definitely worth doing so I'm going to go ahead and get those little pieces sewn on
Now that we have our pieces nicely stitched on, we just take both of our body pieces and we're going to line them all up and we're going to match up those, those little openings there. Clip that one round or pin it, whatever, whatever suits you. And we're just going to sew that same four millimeter seam from the start of that opening. Make sure you back and forth there around around that little tail all the way around to the other side and I do sew that seam two times for strength. And once that seam is stitched you can see that I've gone around again with my pinking shears and just notched that seam right the way around. Um, again if you don't have pinking shears just use your little scissors and when you get to this little junction here you just want to snip into that little corner there just to make sure that that will push right out. So now all we need to do is turn that one through that opening and we're going to give it a good press. And there we have our little body all turned through. Now I've given it a press because we need to make our little marks which just give our body um, a little definition there before we fill it. Now when you printed out your pattern templates you'll have seen that because I can only offer you patterns that uh, printed on a, an A4 size piece of paper because that's what most people have in their printers. Um, I've actually had to separate this pattern piece and give it to you in two pieces but it's very straightforward. You would have already seen that there's a part A and a part B and all you need to do is join them together as I have to create one pattern piece there. So on the on one of those pattern pieces you'll also see that there are two marks and I actually put a hole through mine um, as you can see on my pattern so that when I get to this stage I can just lay my pattern piece over the top remembering my seam allowance so I'm going to sit it exactly where it would be that seam allowance just extending and I just put in my two little dots just in those two positions and then I can take that one away and it's simple as joining the dots. So we're just going to draw a line, which you can see I already have there, to that one. And then you're just going to link up that dot to the little edge of your little white tip. And then you're just going to follow that line up with your little white tip there. So what we do now is we take this one to the machine and we sew this little line all the way to the edge and back again. So we sew it two times so it's nice and strong and make sure you're really back and forth on this section here and this section here so that it's got some real hold because we're going to be adding stuffing in around and over. So get those stitched uh, and I will use a, a matching thread. And once we have that little seam line in, we can now go ahead and fill our little body and we start with the little tail section. This is why forceps are really good because we can get in there around that corner and right up into that tail section. We really want to pack those out. Now this little body will take its own shape as you start to fill it and it will do its thing. And uh, those little seam lines are all there to um, help create that little shape and if you just pack it nice and firm that little kitty will come together very well. It does work better if he's, if he's packed fairly firm. Now because we're just using two pieces in this design and it's just two flat pieces together we've given it some dimension with that little seam. Packing out that outer edge we're never going to get a perfectly rounded edge without any kind of gathering or puckering. That's just the rules of, of um, soft sculpture. If we want to avoid puckering, we have to add another piece. We need to add another gusset, um, another section. But we're keeping this pattern really simple and I feel that the design doesn't, it's not detracted from, from any little gathers or puckering that we've got around. It, it's all in keeping with the design and it keeps it very simple to make. Um, so don't 
be feeling like, oh, I've got a couple of, I've got a couple of gathers there, a couple of tucks there. You know, I'm not being able to get my filling in there. You could pack all day, and you won't be able to actually just get that that outside absolutely perfectly smooth. But that's absolutely fine. It's the same for me as well. So it's not you. It's just about how it's put together. So we're just going to keep on filling that section. You can see that I'm just going to fill that out and we're getting our lovely little tail shape there. So this one, this one design was changed slightly um, since this pattern. So you'll find that it'll all come together very well. So we're going to fill this section and then you're going to go ahead and you can still get in and around. You're going to fill out this section here and right up until your little opening. Okay, so now we've got our little body all filled out and you can see that just there's a couple of little design modifications that I made since this one. Let's just straighten that out slightly, but you can see you're still going to get some little bit of ruching around the edges, but it doesn't detract from your little, uh, your little kitty at all. So you're going to find that much easier to stuff with those few little changes I've made. So our little kitty's head will go on there so you see she's come together beautifully so our next step now you see that I filled right up to there as you're filling this section because we've pulled it in here it will naturally want to fold in on itself so you have to make sure that you're filling and pulling that across so pulling that across adding your filling if wool felting needle comes in really handy here because you can position that filling and then pack it in where you want it to be because you want this section here to be filled out again you won't get a perfect fill um, because we're just using those two pieces you can only ask so much um, from two pieces of fabric so our next step now that i've packed all that in is to sew that little opening closed now i've got my extra strong thread i've got a nice big knot at the end and I'm going to be starting. Now I do have a video that shows you exactly how to do this. I'm going to put that link up there for you. But what basically what I'm going to do, we've got our nicely zigzagged edge, so that hasn't frayed away to nothing. So we start right where that seam finished into our seam allowance, which is still our four millimeters, and that little knot is going to hold. So we're going to travel across Go in at the same, same side, travel down just the length of one stitch, keeping to that seam allowance. And you can see that's our first little stitch. Now we're going to come back to where we started. We're going to go into the very same hole that we first started, travel down the same distance as we did this side. I'm going to pull that little one through so we've crossed over here you can see as soon as I pull that in those little seams knit together and it's really quite invisible which is really what we're after so again we're always going to go back into the same hole that we just came out of on the opposite side travel down just the length of that stitch keep your stitches the same all the way down you can see that little ladder stitch, that's why it's called a ladder stitch. Pull that one in and make sure, just as you go, they will naturally open up a little as you, as you relax it. But just keep pulling them up as you make each stitch and you'll find that it will all knit together well. Don't do your stitches down so far and then try and pull it all up because it won't, you won't close it up here. So you've got to make sure that you keep on giving it a nice little tug and encouraging it to be nicely closed. So I'm going to make my way down a whole length of that little opening. So that gives us a nice little closed opening there. That's our little body ready to go. And now our final step is to add our little head. So we've got our button ready. Now position of the head, have a good look at where I have that little mark there which is where the the center of a little kitty's head is going to be now you can see that it sits a little lower so it's not up here in the center it sits a little lower so that a little chin just tucks in there nicely and it's about central across this way and way for you to check it is to actually pop your little kitty's head on 
Uh, we're going to be anchoring from about the center top here. So just bear that in mind. And you can throw a doll's needle right the way through and then you can pull it up a little and you can see your entry point of your needle, which is how I do it. And you can check it and see, okay, yep, yeah, that's where my little head looks good. So I've got my little mark there. And what I'm going to do is I've got four strands of extra strong thread on my needle. And I'm going to start by going through one side of my button, leave my tails hanging. I don't want that button to fall off. I'm going to come in from behind, about level with that little spot. And I'm going to come out just one side of it. Just a little way to the side of that one. Pull that one through, but not all the way. We want to keep our button on there. And then we're going to take our little head and we're going to dive into our little head. If you've made my little duck's horn puppy, you'll, you'll know that this is exactly the same procedure. We're going to take a big bite out of that little head. You can see there, just travelling across, nice and straight. Pull that one through. Now we're going to go back into the body, just the other side of that little mark. I'm going to come down underneath here and keep a hold of our button. And we're going to come out through the other buttonhole. I'm sorry this looks a little clumsy, it just is. I want to come out just the other side and through that button. It's a lot easier than I'm making it look. I'm trying to keep my big head out from under the camera for you. All right, so we're going to pull those through. I'm going to get rid of my needle. Got those two ends now so I've got some control over everything. So now I can check my little head position and go okay yep that looks good that looks right check you can look either way not a problem. So now I'm just going to tie my first knot. Extra strong thread is very good. It tends to hold on to it itself. It's not too slippery, which is exactly why I like to use it. So now I've tied my first knot so I can get a really good look at that. Now, we really want to add some pressure here. We really want to compress this down. You'll find if you really pull on one of those tails, everything will compress down. And pull that knot in your finger on that knot and hold it and check that you've really got that little head pulled in tight and it will still have movement you've got no worry about that however tight you do it it'll always loosen off just a little so now all I need to do is very carefully keep that tension up and knock that one off at least four times and then I will just snip my thread ends or alternatively you can re-thread your thread ends and dive them back into the holes and out through the body. Entirely up to you. And that, my lovely friends, is our beautiful little sleeping kitty in patchwork style. So you can see, very, very simple to make. And surprisingly, even though the colours are quite, as I said, quite outrageous, um, she still has that beautiful look instantly recognizable as a little sleeping kitty and they really look absolutely fabulous curled up on a, a chair a special little chair or a, a perhaps in the corner of the couch, couch amongst all of your cushions you could color coordinate them to your home um, or of course a beautiful gift for a child for sleeping on their pillow um, and for somebody who loves cats what a perfect little gift and remember them for craft markets. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this one um, and you, that you'll join me for the next one.
Well, thank you all for watching today and making up this little kitty. I hope you had fun. If you did, you could give this video a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. Um, if you're following me on Instagram, you probably saw this little one coming up and the design process. How about you follow me and uh, follow along with us and you can see these little projects start at their very beginnings and come to life. Everybody's sending me photos of your finished work and it's absolutely amazing. I'm absolutely surprised that so many of you are multiple offenders and you're making so many of my little patterns. I love it. I love to see that sort of addiction. So it's a good addiction. Make sure that you send me pictures and I will pin them on my Pinterest board on a special board I've made just for all of you. It's called You Made It and uh, let's celebrate all of our positive work that we're doing together. Make sure that you subscribe, more patterns coming up. Definitely I'm enjoying working with just the fabric only, but it doesn't mean I've forgotten my felt. So there's a really sweet felt pin cushion coming up, so make sure you subscribe for that one. Most of all, everybody, you know the drill. Make sure that you share all those good things. Make sure that you pay them forward. Until next time, it's Huru from me.